Right, <coughs> folks, attempt to explain the chest lever grip. This is um, possibly, possibly the most useful grip in spoon carving. Um, I certainly use it a lot. So, here we go. You're probably familiar with the forehand grip where the knife sits into the V of your thumb and your finger, the sharp bit's pointing away, and you're going to cut, for instance, down here by pushing, maybe even lifting your shoulder and keeping the arm straight. And you can work like the back of the spoon and things there. Um, the grip is very different for chest lever. So, chest lever is this uh, funky chicken one where you flap your arms back, you hunch your shoulders in and you open your arms out. So now the knife position, the palms are up both in the workpiece and in on the knife. And the knife sits across your fingers there with your palm up and the butt of the knife is into the fleshy pad of your hand and for me my uh, crook of my finger there sits under the hosel or the top of the handle on the knife and my thumb comes down firmly on top of the knife so I can push the knife down into the wood and I've got control there turning that angle just by raising and lowering my elbow really I can control that angle now these fingers rest onto my rib cage sort of there just high uh, on the rib cage sort of just below my man boobs and the fundamental thing is you cross over like scissors sometimes also called the scissor grip the workpiece and the knife and then you open out your shoulders so you hunch in your shoulders and open out your shoulders hunch in your shoulders open out your shoulders and there's a lot of power in that motion as you open your shoulders so we're working down the back of the handle here taking off some fairly large pieces. There's a variation on this where you're simply bracing the knife against the rib cage here, pushing the thumb down onto that surface you've established and pulling the workpiece past it. And I go back, yeah, the bevel runs flat on that surface I've created, and you bring it along and you're creating this lovely flat plain surface where it doesn't quite get in the edge engaged there. So you're not tilting it up, you're going running back along the surface. As long as you're running down the grain, which usually the back of the handle here is, yeah, that gives you these beautiful plain cuts. Got a break out there, but that'll clear in a bit. Um, the other time, chest levers are really useful, is where you're going to work across grain a little bit. So the back of the bowl of the spoon is a really good place for shifting material uh, using the chest lever because you can be very precise where you place the knife to start with and you see it just engaged in the wood and then you open your shoulders and you can ping off chips right across the room usually if your coffee cups down there somewhere they'll land in the coffee but interestingly if you drink all your coffee and leave an empty cup you'll never get one in and it's much harder I don't know why one of those sad rules of life you can even um, work around these sorts of areas. It's not that brilliant because you can't quite see what you're doing. But working across grain, so like clearing up the end here, clearing across grain again, it's useful. I'm not saying it's the only grip, but times when you're cutting across a lot of grain, you've got a lot of power in there. So, um, chest lever, it's all in getting the knife position right in your hand, the thumb on the top to help push down into the wood, and then just getting the feel for that tiny amount of twist you need to put in to get the knife and the workpiece. You can change the angle of the workpiece, so you can change the angle of the knife. But after you've done a bit, you'll start to feel, once you've established the surface, you can run along a surface, run along a surface dead useful. Sort out your chest lever and you're halfway to being a decent spoon carver. Well, maybe not halfway, maybe three quarters. 
but you get in there. Good luck.